Now since we have started writing our test cases in robot framework, it is right time to talk about built-in library, which is the default library and having rich and very important functions required to write your test cases in robot framework. So if you are using red editor, just type in built-in dot and then you will see the list of functions that this library is having. And if you are still sticking to write editor, in that case, you would be having format like this. And then in the test case, if you use built-in dot and then hit control space, you will see the list of functions. So again, the same list you will see here as well with description on the right side. So if you want to see the usage of any function, just expand that right side area and then you will see the usage with example as well. Now throughout this tutorial, I'll be following this Git repository so that you need not require make any notes and this repository would act as your notes itself. So first of all, we'll see how to create a variable. So variable always starts with a dollar symbol and in curly braces, you need to give the name of variable and equals and then you need to use the function set variable and then you need to put the value of that variable. Remember that you need to have tab between your variable name, your keyword name and your arguments. So here I'm logging the value of A and value of B. Now A is an integer, B is a string. Let's see how logs react based on these two values. So here we can see both the values are assigned and here when I use the log function, the values are printed on console as well. Now this is the first function set variable which is used to assign value to a variable, be it a string or integer or any other format. Now if you want to have a condition to assign a value that you want to assign this value only if this condition satisfies and you want to assign some other value if that condition fails. So in that case, you would be using the keyword named as set variable if. So value of A would be set variable if. The first argument would be the condition. Here you can see the list of arguments. First is condition and the second is values. Right. So you need to give a tab or four spaces after your keyword name. I put the condition as one equals equal one, which I know would always be true. And in case of true, I want to assign a value to this variable, which is Kamal. And I want to assign another value, which is Girdar, if this condition is false. Now let us see what would be the value of this variable A if I use this keyword. Let's print the value of A using log function. So log A. Let us run this. So it prints the value Kamal because the first argument after the condition was value if true and the second argument was value if false. Now let us make this condition fail. So one equals equals two would always be failing, which would give false. And therefore the value of that variable would be my surname. So this is how we can set the variables conditionally. So far we have covered set variable and set variable f. Let us see the third function which is set global variable. Now the scope of the variables that we have created earlier using set variable or set variable f was local. That means if you assign a variable here in the test case one, the scope would be that test case only. If you create this variable in a function, the scope would be that function only. But if you want to create a variable global that acts as a central variable that can be used throughout your execution, you need to use function set global variable after the same statement that you have written earlier to assign a variable. And then as an argument, you just need to give the variable name. So just create a local variable and then use set global variable variable name that would make that variable global. Now this variable you can use throughout your execution. Next function set would be about data type and number system conversions. So we have binary, we have hexa, octal, we have hexadecimal systems. Now if you want to convert one system to other, for that we have various functions. The first function is convert to binary. So let's see here in example a equals 100 
and B equals convert to binary A. Now A would be converted to binary notation and that value would be going to variable B and we are logging the value of B. Now equivalent of 100 in binary number system is 11001000. So this is how we convert to binary. Convert to boolean. Now this function is used to handle case sensitive true or false to a boolean value. Now it won't be converting your numerical values or something else to a boolean value. But if true which is true or false is written as a string format in some other case for example t and r u capital and then e small or maybe something like that. If you want to have an actual boolean value for that you need to use function convert to boolean. We have used convert to binary. Conversion of this value to binary is not possible. That's why we are getting error here. But conversion to boolean is possible and therefore we are getting actual true value here. Next is convert to bytes. Now if you have a sky values of your characters and you want to convert that to bytes, so for that you would be using this function. I'm just copying and pasting this example as it is and let's see what is the response here. So 75 is a sky value of K, 65 is a sky value of capital A, M is 77 and the actual value of this number set is Kamal in byte format. Okay, so next function is convert to hex. Now hexadecimal is again another number system. If you want to convert value from your decimal number system to hexadecimal number system, you can use convert to hex. Now that doesn't mean that you cannot convert your octa or any other number system to hexadecimal but the second argument is your base. If you do not give any base default would be 10 which is decimal number system but if you, if you give the second argument as 10 it would again treat it as decimal if you give it as 8 it would treat it as octa. Now octa to hexadecimal would be converted only if you give this second value as 8. Similarly, binary to hexa is only possible if you provide 2 over here as the second argument. So that is how we have the conversions. Now another one is convert to integer. So if you have a hexadecimal value and you want to convert that to integer, that is also possible. Convert to number just converts that value to a number if the value is in string format convert to octal will convert that to octal number system. So in the same way you can see all these functions and because all these functions are very easy to use. So you can just give the input and that would give you the output. If you have any questions in these just write to me in a separate email because talking too much about these functions would be useless because again all these functions are very simple and easy to use. Next function is set log level. Now since we, we have seen how we are logging various values, it is important to understand what all log levels we have. So we have informational log level, we have HTML based, we have warning log level, we have error based log level and we have debug log level. So let us take one example of each. If we give the argument here, set log level info and then log, this is info log and then as a second argument if I say just keep it as info log. So info log would be printed like this with an info tag in front of it. HTML log because I have used some h1 tags over there it is actually printed in that format only. So you can have a separate reporting if you have some table structure or something like that you want to embed that into reporting you can use it. Second is warning that adds a warning tag error again adds an error tag in front of it. And on the top of the report, if you have your test cases having errors or warnings, you will see all these things on the top itself. So that is the benefit of adding 
logging because it helps you in generating the right summary of your test cases. There are a lot of other functions that we'll be covering later in these videos. So first is suite and test information functions. So set suite documentation, metadata, variable, tags, documentation, message. These are various functions that we can use for suite or test information. For logging, we have log, log many, log to console and log variables and comment. Assertions, we have lot of assertions to put the assertions in the test cases like if the value is this, is equal to this or not and based on that our test case should pass or not. For loop statements we have various functions we will be talking about these later. Importing library resources and variables play a very important role when you have your resources from some external source. We will be talking about these later in detail. Now, execution control is if you want to control your execution based on certain outcome or condition. Run keyword if this happens, run keyword if this does not happen. So like that. If you want to add a sleep, you have a sleep function as well. There are other lot of important functions which lets you give count, length, time, variable value, multiple values, concatenation operation, evaluation of something, fail or pass and regular expression adding. So as I said the library is really very rich and therefore there are lots and lots of functions in these libraries and it would be requiring a lot of time to go through all these functions one by one but going through all these directly would not leave that impact. Better would be if I talk about these when the context actually comes. So I park these functions for now. I'll be talking about these later and I'll be highlighting that I have covered these functions later. Stay connected with me and in the next video we'll be talking about scalars, list, dictionaries and variable files.